Alright, welcome back to the channel. West Ham are in a little bit of bother, I think it's fair to say right now. They've just come off the back of a 5-1 home defeat to Eddie Howe's Newcastle at the London Stadium. Their heaviest ever defeat at the London Stadium in the, what, six odd years they've been there now, maybe seven. And yeah, to be fair, they're massively in trouble right now. And to be honest, I think with the relegation battle being so tight this year, I mean, I look at the table now and see how tight it is now. With nine games to go, West Ham have ten games to go because they're the only team in the relegation battle right now that, you know, have a game in hand over the teams around them but even still the gap between the relegation zone Crystal Palace in 12th 30 points Southampton bottom of the league on 23 points 7 points separating 20th from 12th which to be fair is actually quite a wide margin considering how close it's been between those two positions in recent weeks and West Ham look at the end of the day it's not the end of the world, they're still 15th in the league on 27 points, sharing 27 points with three teams, Everton, Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth, but yeah, I think to be fair right now, regardless of where you are on the table, whether you're 12th or 20th, I don't think it makes an absolutely huge difference because a win, if not two wins at the extreme, I think can have you plummeting or going up into you know the depths of mid-table to be fair, so I think I'll take West Ham's position with a little grain of salt, but it's looking mightily worrying for West Ham, I mean they got absolutely outclassed by Newcastle. 3.12 expected goals for Newcastle to 0.81 for West Ham. 58% possession, 15 shots to 7, 5 big chances to 1. I mean, just absolutely staggering. West Ham creating one big chance and obviously scoring from it. And uh, yeah, just got absolutely mauled at home by Newcastle. Now, bear in mind, I will cut them a little bit of slack because obviously not only is it a very good Newcastle team they played against tonight, but it's a very good Newcastle team who, you know, are on a massive run of momentum right now and obviously have hit form at just the right time, having absolutely destroyed Manchester United over the weekend and you know a result that really flattered Manchester United to only lose 2-0 and then beating Nottingham Forest 2-1 away from home before the international break just gone by so I think I'll cut West Ham a little bit of slack in that sense especially given the fact they've you know ground out a win against Southampton their relegation rivals at the weekend courtesy of a Naeth Aguirre header but even still I think West Ham fans will know themselves it is very worrying obviously if you see the scenes at the end of the game they got booed off the pitch with the minimal fans that were still in the ground I mean the the fans absolutely absolutely pegged it for the exits with you know 10-15 minutes to go and obviously then Newcastle went on to get a fourth and then a fifth and yeah just not a good result on paper or a scoreline that flatters them by any stretch of imagination I think it's fair to say and look I don't know where it's gone wrong for West Ham this season I really really don't I think it could simply be a case of maybe David Moyes taking this team as far as they can possibly go and as far as he can possibly take them because obviously in previous seasons when David Moyes first took over in his second stint of the club there was obviously a lot of you know pessimism about it but he really changed the critics minds and obviously got West Ham into Europe first of all the Europa League and then second of all into the Conference League which they are still in this season and look maybe that's maybe playing a factor in terms of how bad they've been this season but West Ham it's clear to see have absolutely fallen off a cliff nose first this season and um, yeah currently find themselves in 15th having qualified for Europe in back-to-back -back seasons and to be fair it's it's just surprising because if you look at the team they put out tonight right you've got players like Lucas Paqueta who's just you know a really really good player Declan Rice who's one of the best holding midfielders in the Premier League Jared Bowen, an England international on his day. Kurt Zuma, who's a very solid centre-back. Naef Gerd, who, again, a very solid centre-back. Very good for Morocco in their successful World Cup where they got to the semi-finals. Emerson, a solid player. Tilo Kerr, a German international, obviously joined from PSG, so he can't be a bad player. Lucas Fabianski, a very you know experienced goalkeeper who has been very consistent in his Premier League career so far. Obviously made a massive error that led to the fourth goal tonight. Mikel Antonio, who's been one of the most underrated strikers in the Premier League for the last few years, and even still a team that's missing the likes of Gianluca Scamacca, for example, who's a top quality striker. So it's a really weird situation that West Ham are in, and you know what? You'd actually say on paper, in terms of the squad and the personnel of players they actually have at their disposal, that maybe they're too good to go down, but the thing about West Ham, they'll know more than anyone their fans. We've heard this before with West Ham, where they're you know too good to go down, so, so to speak, and they go down, like of course in that 2002-2003 season when they had the likes of Jermaine Defoe, Joe Cole, Michael Carrick, but yeah, it's, it's not looking promising by any stretch of the imagination for West Ham and they're obviously having a massively poor season. I'm going to go through who West Ham have left in the Premier League and um, yeah because I think I watched a video James Lawrence Alcott did where he essentially just analysed every single Premier League club's run in and obviously the you know the severity of it and the, the difficulty of it and West Ham were right up there at the top in terms of you know the toughness of the run in they have which 
doesn't, you know, doesn't give them any sort of optimism whatsoever, especially given how in the gutter the, you know, atmosphere is between the fans and the players right now. The next game, a massive one away at Fulham. You know, Fulham who are, you could say, on the beach. They're one of those teams that are, you know, on the beach because they've achieved their goal already, which is to have survived relegation. They've done so pretty comfortably and they're not going to get European football. I think it's fair to say they're one of those, you know, very minimal amounts of teams who are just sitting and hovering in mid-table mid -table between now and the end of the season now. Then they've got Gent away next Thursday night in their, you know, first uh, first leg of their quarterfinals in the in the Conference League. Then they've got Arsenal at home. Going to be a really tough game. Two o'clock on a Sunday, so maybe they could get the fans behind them in that one and maybe cause an upset, but taking points off Arsenal and Man City at this stage of the season with so much to play for for both those teams at the top of the league, it's going to be massively difficult to get points off Arsenal in that one. So you'd kind of say that's one that's kind of ruled out in terms of getting anything from it, really. Then they've got the second leg against Ghent, which is kind of irrelevant, obviously, in their Premier League form. A massive one then at the Vitality Stadium, Sunday, 2 o'clock kickoff, away against Bournemouth the weekend after the 23rd of April. That's going to be a massive game for West Ham. And being away from home against a team like Bournemouth, who, you know, are quietly going about their business, obviously very dangerous on the counter-attack with the pace they've got forward with, you know, Uatara, Solanke, who's able to run the channels and drop deep to link up play. Philip Billing, whose movement from deep is absolutely top-notch. Marcus Tavernier, who's come back from injury recently, come back into the team and, you know, really impressed and is a very good player for their system. Then Liverpool at home, that's going to be a massive one, a midweek game against a Liverpool team who are struggling and by that stage could be well and truly home and hose with regards to the top four race in terms of, you know, being out of it. Crystal Palace away then, a massive game once again, away fixture against the team that are also down and about there in the relegation battle. I think Crystal Palace should maybe be just about safe by them because if I'm right in saying they do have quite a nice run in. Man City away, just a complete write off for them. There's no chance really they're going to get anything from that. Man United at home then, you'd hope to, for West Ham's sake, that Man United do have Champions League football secured in the bag by that stage so that they'll kind of take off the pedal, the foot off the pedal a little bit. Brentford away, going to be a tough fixture for any team really, so not easy for West Ham at all. Then the penultimate game of the season, West Ham's last game in the last home game of the season, sorry, Leeds United at home. Going to be an absolute six pointer of the highest fucking degree, that one. And then the final day, they go to the King Power against fellow strugglers Leicester, who also are struggling massively and currently managerless after Brendan Rodgers got the sack after their defeat against Leeds at the weekend. So, yeah, if you're looking at that, if you're, you know, totaling how many points West Ham should ideally get between now and the end of the season, it really depends, I think, on, you know, those games against the teams around them. And maybe another win where they sneak it from someone like Liverpool or maybe they get a point against Brentford away or something and then they beat Leeds at home, then I think maybe they could have a chance because I think with the fact they're on 27 points, I think this season you're looking at maybe 36 to 37 points to, you know, fully secure yourself a place in this league next season where West Ham get those, you know, nine odd points from. The point is here, it's, it's going to be an absolutely horrendous run in for West Ham. They're going to have to really dig deep and don't get me wrong, they do have the squad for it. Whether David Moyes is the man to get them over the line or not remains to be seen. Like I said, I think it's gone pretty stale to be fair for David Moyes at West Ham. So it's really going to be an interesting one. But if you're asking my opinion, just to sum up this video, just to conclude this video on whether I think West Ham will survive, a few weeks ago, I would have said absolutely just because of the personnel they have. But I think with the way things have gone in recent weeks, the form of the teams at the bottom right now, and especially the resurgence of the likes of Bournemouth with obviously Everton having Sean Dyche, Leeds doing, you know, picking up a few wins recently under Javi Gracia and the sheer difficulty of West Ham's running I think West Ham will go down I can't lie I really do think they'll go down and even though like I said on paper they should be too good to go down you know theoretically but no team is good to, too good to go down in this league every single team in this league and every single game is going to be really difficult and with the toughness of West Ham's fixtures I think they'll go down. I really, really do. I think it'll be them, Southampton. And off the top of my head, I'm going to go with... I think it really depends on who Leicester get as their new manager. And, you know, whether James Madison can single-handedly keep them up. Because even though Leicester have a good squad on paper, Madison has really carried them over the line so far this season for any of the points they have so far. But I think it's between them and Nottingham Forest. I think Everton should be okay. I think Wolves should be okay under Lopetegui. I think Javi Gracia has done just enough to release a little bit of pressure for Leeds. I think Palace's running will suit them. So yeah, right now I'm going to go with Southampton, West Ham, and then either Leicester or Nottingham Forest, really depending on the manager situation. And you could really flip a coin there because Forest have been on a horrendous run of form themselves recently. But to be fair, my opinion will probably change every single weekend that goes by on this one. So it's going to be one hell of a fucking relegation battle. That's for absolute sure. But yeah, West Ham fans, sum up your thoughts for me in the comment section below because I'm sure you're feeling deflated more than anything after that result. It's never nice to lose 5-1, especially at home in front of your own fans against a team that, yes,
yes, I said very good Newcastle, but on paper it's unacceptable, especially given how much West Ham have to play for in this relegation battle that they've you know found themselves in this season. And yeah, West Ham fans, leave it down in the comment section below. Keep a level head. Don't be too pessimistic about your own club. But will West Ham survive relegation this season? Honest opinions, guys. Leave it in the comment section below. Non-West Ham fans as well. And let me know which three teams do you think will be playing amongst the championship next season. And yeah, leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. It would be massively appreciated. Not if you could subscribe to the channel as well. That would be absolutely hugely appreciated. You'd be an absolute legend if you hit that big, fat, juicy, succulent subscribe button because we are close to hitting 2,000 subscribers on this channel. So every single one of you that gets the message and hits that subscribe button, you'd be helping me out more than you could ever imagine. So um, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video and yeah, chat to you later.